Amen. You can go ahead and be seated. I would ask Pastor Al, I said, who's he talking about? <laughs> My God. It's just so good to be here uh, this morning and to be um, with, you, with all of you, our family is from San Diego and Pastor Al is one I've been known for many, many years, over 25 years, we've been our friends, and I was thinking that, um, you know, when I met him, he was doing the camera, and then I seen Joel Osteen used to be on cameras, I said, that's the key to growing a mega church, amen, <laughs> get behind the camera, amen, so brothers, don't think you're just a cameraman, amen, you will never know how God is going to use you uh, one day. And uh, to a lot of my friends here I've known for many, many years, and uh, Brother Randy there with me, and uh, brought some of the guys from my church came. Amen. Don't you guys stand? Amen. They want to come early. They want to see what was going on in San Diego. Praise the Lord. And, uh, you know, like I said, me and Pastor have been friends for years. You never know who people are going to end up being. You better treat people nice. Amen. You never know. Amen. I used to have Pastor Al come to preach to my church before he was even a pastor. Amen. And I was like, now I'm like, yeah, I, I know Pastor Al. You know, that's, that's, that's my friend. Amen. You know, pastor Elder Al Valdez. The closer. Yeah. That, uh, now he's the opener and the closer. He's the alpha and omega. <laughs> Amen. So he's going to speak to us pastors. Uh, tomorrow night, but it's just an honor and a privilege to be here this morning. And so I want to get right into it. I want you to get your Bibles and go to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10. Gospel of Luke, chapter 10. And how many know you guys are in the year of building? And he went talking to me and telling me they would meet with architects and knock down the wall and do all these things. But in order to go to the next level, amen, how many know your giving has to go to the next level? You, you can't go to the next But you got a mature church because you said you got cheerful givers. We ain't there yet in Atlanta, amen. But I don't stop. I say, I'll take mad money. I don't matter. You, you ain't got to be cheerful. You can ball it up, throw it in the basket. I will take it out, iron it, amen, take it to the bank on money, amen. Until you get there, we accept mad money. But it's good when they're cheerful givers, amen. But like we say in Georgia, I ain't scared, not one bit. But Luke chapter 10, verse 25, it says, And behold, a certain lawyer stood up, and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said unto him, What is written in the law? How read it? He answered, Thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered right. This do, and you shall live. But he, willing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, And who is my neighbor. Jesus answered him, said, A certain man went down to Jerusalem, to Jericho, and fell among robbers and thieves, and was stripped him of his raiment, and wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side, and likewise a Levite, when he was at the place came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him, he went to him, bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the morrow he departed, and he took out two pence and gave to the host and said, Take care of him, and whatsoever you spend more, when I come again, I will repay you. Which now of these three thinkers was a neighbor unto him that fell among thieves? And he said, he that showed mercy in him. Then Jesus said unto him, go and do likewise. 
Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you this morning for your word, God. We pray that you continue in the same spirit that you have through this worship, even into your word. And God, we give you all honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. This passage of scripture that we're going to look at this morning briefly is, said this lawyer or what is seen as a theologian, somebody that knew the word, came and tempted Jesus with a question. You know, I, I'd rather preach than teach because when we teach, we open it up to people. And I hate when people answer questions that they know the answer to. And then they want to answer the question that they ask to show everybody how smart they are and how deep they are. And that's what this guy comes to Jesus. This dude was a theologian. And he come and asked Jesus this question. But how many know you better watch out when you kind of confront Jesus with some foolishness? He said, what does the law say? You a lawyer. You know the law. You know the word. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your mind and with all your soul and all your strength and with and the other, your neighbor as yourself. And he says, okay, you, you got that. So now what I need you to do is do it. He said, well, who's my neighbor? And Jesus came and told him this story about, we call it about the Good Samaritan. And in this story, we're going to look at three groups of people that's in this story this morning. And he began to give this parable when he said a certain man left Jerusalem to Jericho and he fell among robbers. Or some of your Bibles say thieves. And uh, he was stripped of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. Before I got saved, I, I was a thief. I don't know, it's hard for you to believe it today. But, and I was a good thief. I was good. I was good. I could steal your stereo and be down the street and you still listen to the music. <laughs> but a thief is someone that steals from you and you don't even realize it right away that it's gone. Then you realize it. I had a friend named Lafayette Dorsey and we used to steal together, but he would even steal from you. <laughs> and whenever he came over to my house, if I had to go to the restroom, I made him clap his hands till I came back. <laughs> because he was just that kind of guy. Oh, you know somebody like that as well? You're laughing? <laughs> Amen. But this man, he fell among robbers because a thief will steal from you. You don't realize a robber will look you in the face, pull a gun on you or a knife and tell you to give you, give him what you have. And in the story, the first group it talks about are the robbers. And the Bible says, will a man rob God? It didn't say, will you steal from God like a thief? But will you rob God? And we know Malachi 3 and 8 said, will a man rob God? Then he says, yeah, you're robbing me, the whole nation. Of and he said, how will we rob you? He said, in tithes and offerings. Because the mindset of a robbery is, what's mine is mine, and what's yours is mine. That's the mindset of a robber. You know, what they belongs to them, and then when they see you, they want to get what you have as well, because that's the mindset of a robber. And it's amazing how we can rob God and then come to church and ask God to bless us. I mean, what if somebody broke in your house? You seen them going down the street with your TV and came back and say, hey, can I borrow your VCR? Can I borrow your DVD player? Dude, you just robbed me. Now you want me to bless you? But it happens every Sunday all over America. People come to church, they don't give, and then they want God to bless them while they're robbing. Looking God in the face, a basket went by, you're like, God, can you bless me? Bless me, Lord. Bless me. Bless me, Lord. As you rob him. He said, if God says, test me in this area. This is the only area in the Bible that God says you can test me at. It tests me, and I will open up the windows of heaven 
And I began to ask God, what do you, why open up the windows of heaven? You know, why not open up the, the, the doorway of this? He said, because I put it behind the window because I want to bless you so bad, I want you to see it. I didn't put it behind the door. How many remember, let's make a deal? They used to put it behind the door, and you, you had to pick, and you might come up with a donkey, amen, a zonk. But God said, I'm going to put it behind the window. And he said, well, I said, God, what's the window they're supposed to look at? He said, look at Pastor Aaron. Look at Pastor Miller. Look at how they bless. This is how I want to bless you. That's how bad I want to bless you. Look at the guys in here that own businesses. That's how bad I want to bless you. I don't put them behind the door. I put them where you can see them. But some people spend their whole life window shopping. You just look through the window. Go in there and try stuff on. Look in the mirror. And walk out with nothing. Because you're a window shopper. Because you're robbed. God said, bring the tithes and the offerings. See, the, the tithes, all it does is get the curse off of you. It's the offering that brings the blessing. You just did your part when you did the tithes. But some believers, if I could call them that, they're robbers. Now, look what happens when you rob. It says here, when they rob this man, that they stripped him, they wounded him, and they departed, leaving him half dead. That's what happens to the church when you don't give. You leave the church wounded. You leave the church, amen, with not what it needs to do, what it has to do. You leave the church half dead. That's what robbers do. The church can never function at its full capacity with a house full of robbers. Ain't, but ain't no robbers in here. I thought I was in Atlanta this morning. I'm sorry. <laughs> Praise the Lord. My bad. Forgive me for even bringing that up. I should have just went to the second group of people. <laughs> now, that's the first group of people in this story. Now, in the second group of people here in this story, it says, verse 31, And by chance there was a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came, looked, and passed by on the other side. Now, this is the same group. These two, I'm putting in one group. And these were believers. These were leaders. These were disciples. These were priests. They were in the church. They were connected. They were plugged in. They were past robbing. But they left from Jerusalem, where the temple was, and was headed back home. And on the way home, they saw a man... In need. But their mentality was, God, I gave you what was yours down in Jerusalem. See, what's yours is yours, God, but what's mine is mine. Hallelujah. I'm going to just pray for him. It keep on going about my business. Because sometimes we give and we feel like we did our part. But on the way home, God shows us people with needs. But I already gave. I know you don't want me to spend no more money to help nobody else out. One day I had a, just bought a, a, a Jaguar. We went out to go eat between service, and we were on our way back. And there was a lady who ran out of gas on the freeway. And the Holy Spirit said, stop and get, you know, take her to get some gas. She was getting out the car with the gas. But I couldn't get over. So I got off at the next exit. That's where I was getting off anyway. And I thought about, let me get some gas. I pulled in the gas station. And right when I pulled in the gas station, got out, here she comes walking up in the gas station with a gas can. I said, oh, amen. I said, is that your car broke down up there? She said, yeah, I ran out of gas. I said, let me get you some gas. And I put her in. I said, come on, I'll take you back up here. So the church was right around the corner. She was kind of dirty and stuff. So I passed by the church. I said, if you, I'm from Victory Outreach Pastor. We have rehab homes for men and women. And if you know somebody <laughs> that might need our assistance, this is our church right here. So as I was pulling in, one of the brothers said, hey, Pastor, what's going on? I said, oh, no, we'll just take this lady. She, she got her some gas. She ran out of gas. So he's like, you want me to take her? I said, yeah, go ahead. You can take her. And I realized he just wanted to drive my Jaguar. You know, <laughs> he didn't care nothing about this lady. <laughs> but then I started thinking, how did she get to the gas station the same time I did? She's walking, and I'm in a car. 
The Bible says, beware that you entertain angels. You don't know who it is. And God, when I thought about that, God said, yeah. He said, that's true. He said, I gave you this nice car, but I wanted to see if you could still pick up dirty people. I wanted to see if I made a mistake by blessing you. Is this my Jaguar or is it just your Jaguar? Is that your house or is that God's house? See, you, you was fine on the bus. Then you got a car and you started tripping. Hey, man, can you get this person a ride home? But I don't live that way. But do you got any gas money? You've been riding off people for 20 years. Now you want to ask somebody do they got gas money. I remember you when you came in. I got your picture in the office. Don't make me bust you out. Amen. So their mindset is, God, I gave you what I'm supposed to give you. So the rest of this is mine. Don't ask me for no more. Because their mindset was, is what's mine is mine. And yours is yours. But then we have another individual. Thank God for this last individual. Verse 33 says, there was a certain Samaritan. And he journeyed and came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And he went to him. He bound up his wounds. Pouring in oil and wine. And set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence and gave to the, the host or the hotel clerk. And said to him, take care of him and whatsoever you spend more than this. Because this is all I got on me right now. But here, take this. But if it takes more than this, then when I come again, I'm going to pay you whatever it is that you had to spend. To take care of this guy. See, if you came this morning as a robber, we want you to go to that next level as the priests and Levites. But maybe you came in at the level of the priests and Levites, but we want you to leave like the Samaritan. Because the mindset of Samaritan is what's mine is yours, God, and if that ain't enough, I go get some more. See, because it's going to take people, it's going to take Samaritan-minded people to build this church, to knock down this wall. Pastor, I know we picked up pledges. I don't know what came in, but was that enough? Well, not really. Well, I'm going to go get some more. I'll be right back, amen. And he, go get that and bring that. How about that? He said, I ain't got that. That's, we still ain't there yet. You know what? I got a credit card. I'll charge it. I'll do whatever I got to do. If this ain't enough, just put it on my bill because God has called me. God has saved me. God wants to use me to help build this ministry, to help people that have been hurt and wounded, that have been left for dead. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. God is going to use this church to take San Diego and all the surrounding cities. God is going to use you to knock down that wall. All, but it's going to take some merited minded believers that say, God, and whatever it takes, because what is mine is yours, and you can get all of it. Amen. Or are we going to be robbers? Or are you going to be robbers? Or are you just going to settle with, man, I did what I was supposed to do? What, what, I mean, what? I did what I was supposed to do. But what is the Holy Spirit telling you to do? He says, I need you to be like the Samaritan. Give what you got. And he says, if that ain't enough, just put it on my bill. And when I come back, tell me whatever it is. And I'll pay the balance. And he was a Samaritan. The Bible said this man was a Jew. He knew, see, this is about rich guy, rich like us. He was a Samaritan. And how many know when people are hurting, they don't care who helps them? Huh? They don't care who helps them when you hurt, when you're struggling. You, you don't care who helps you. But sometime, as soon as we get a little bit together,
This man might have got healed, got delivered, got back on his feet, and continued to despise Samaritan. Sometimes we begin to despise what God has used to get us on our feet. They just want my money. Well, why did we come where you was at if we wanted money? <laughs> you didn't have none. We had to put you in a home for five years, you know. <laughs> it took five years for us to see the light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> and then you got a little job. All they do is want, they just want your money. You didn't have none when, when we met you, and it's only because of Victor Outreach that you got a job now. Yeah. You were talking about using a home. I was, you know, I was sacrificing being home. Well, you you got to have something to sacrifice. You got to get something first before you can even sacrifice. Showing up every Sunday ain't a sacrifice. That's a blessing that God even let you in his house. Because when I came to Victor Out, my mama wouldn't even let me in the house. I used to go over there on a holiday, and they would see me come and close the curtain, the blinds, put their hand over the baby's mouth. I'd be knocking, be quiet. Shh. Then somebody was impatient. They peek out the curtain. I knew y'all was in there. Come around the back. They give me a plate and a 20 twin twin. They know what I was going to do with it. They wouldn't even let me in the house. I came home from work one day. My mother had my stuff in a box on the front porch. <laughs> but God let me in his house. <laughs> there was a door open for me in Victory Outreach. And then I had the nerve to be like checking them out. I don't know about these people. I'm smoked out, just out of prison. I got pants with no pockets in them. Because you know how when you're a crack, you keep looking for money you ain't got? <laughs> keep checking pockets. So I didn't even have no pockets no more. They was doing my intake, telling me about the program. I reached through my pocket, started scratching my knee. They was like, a miracle. <laughs> See, I, I didn't forget how I walked into Victory Outreach. I didn't forget I was lost and I was bound and I didn't have nothing. And everything I got today is because of this vision. The dignity I got today is because of this vision. The respect that I got today is because of this vision. The house I live in today is because of this vision. The car that I drive today is because of this vision. Flying all over the world today is because of this vision. And I will never forget what God has done for me and God what's mine is yours and whatever you need, you you can get it. You can get it. It ain't mine. I'm just a steward. I'm just a steward. I'm just a steward of what I have. I ain't bring nothing in this world. And I didn't bring nothing in the big ground ridge. I mean, I don't know about you. You might have came in with something. I didn't come in with nothing. Well, they just asked me, hey, will you do this? Will you go here? Yeah, sure. I ain't had nothing nowhere. I didn't have no life. I had no life. None whatsoever. And I realized somebody had gave for there to be a bed for me to come in. Somebody gave for me to have a Bible. Somebody gave for the, there to be a van to take me to my parole officer. And now it's my opportunity. It's my time. Because when I got saved, my goal was to graduate the home, get a job, and be able to pay my time and go on vacation. <laughs> I never lasted long enough on a job to go on vacation, you know. That was, my, that was my goal. That was like, yes, if I could just do that, wow. You know, considering how my life was. And I graduated, got a job. And then they came to me a year later and said, you know, you, next week, you know, you, you do a vacation. What? What are you talking about, man? <laughs> really? 
you going to pay me not to come here next week? So I started thinking about where I'm going to go. And they had a rehab conference coming up. I said, that's where I'm going to go on vacation. I know I can't get in no trouble. I ain't going to trip. I ain't going to get messed up. So my first vacation was at the rehab conference. But God didn't save you just so your mama could be happy. He saved you so somebody else's mama could be happy. God didn't save me so Miss Caroline could be happy. Oh, praise God. Amen. God saved me because he heard the cry of people's mamas in Atlanta. It, it ain't about you. Get over yourself. You ain't never going to make an impact in this ministry until you let the ministry become bigger than you. And the Samaritan, let things be bigger than him. Let the need be bigger than you. Because you forget, don't forget, one time you had a need. You had a need. And God saw you. People gave. And I remind the people in my church all the time. You know, I went to Atlanta, and they used to tease me about going to Atlanta. You go in there, be down there with Opie and Andy Griffin. Goober going to be your home director. <laughs> I'd walk in the church. We didn't know how to buy Atlanta. we walk in the church. they go, do 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 But I'd walk in the church. I said, hey, man, that's what God told me to do. When we got there, I let them know. I came from the East L.A. Whittier Church. It's Whittier now. And I used to say, God. All the black churches in South Central, you take me to the most Mexican church in Victory Outreach. <laughs> they used to call me Gershom, one of Moses' son. Strange man in a strange land. What you, what you doing? What you doing over there, bro? And I said, you know, they knew I was coming to Atlanta, and they knew Atlanta predominantly black. There's some black folks, because see, I've been black a long time. I, yeah. <laughs> 50 some years I've been black and I said people was having car washes burrito sales and tamale sales to raise money to send me here to reach y'all for God's honor for God's glory now who are you going to make the sacrifices to give reach somebody else I believe that as you do that, one day you're going to get to heaven and people are going to walk up to you and say, man, you know, I thank God for you. I thank God for you. Where do I know you from? You, you from Compton? You, you, you was in a penitentiary with me? Or what, what? I said, no, you gave so that I could get, uh, so I, I, I was reached because of your giving. <laughs> and I just want to say thank you. But you just didn't make it be about yourself. But you made it, you realize it's bigger than you. And this morning, I don't know what level you're at. But if you came in robbing, it ain't late. We still got envelopes and stuff. And you, you can fix that this morning before you leave. And I'm not going to be a robber no more. Because we come in many times hurting and needing help, and we used to go in this way and Give me this. Can you help me with this? And then God starts telling you to do this, and you start saying, stop that. Don't do that no more. What are you doing? You know, you start giving, and God challenges you. Because one thing about, one thing I learned is that the devil can steal the word. I'm preaching to you this morning, but he can steal the word. Matthew 13 tells you that. The seed can be sown, but the devil can come and steal it. But listen here. The devil cannot steal an experience. See, once you hear the word and you act on it and then you reap from your obedience to the word, he can't take that. The devil cannot convince me not to give. Because I've already learned how to give and seen the benefits, amen, of, of giving and seen the blessings of giving. So I've already experienced it. So there's nothing that he could tell me to convince me not to do it. Then I had to go to that next level where I was giving and giving my offerings and everything. And God said, I want you to start 
bless him. Brothers, take the two brothers, the mighty men of valor with you. You pay for everything. Put them in the room. So I started doing that. Went to that next level. It wasn't about me. Then he challenged me to even pay for the women to start going. So I told the pastor's wife, you pick out two women, I'll give you the money. Don't tell them it's me because I don't want them winking at me next week. So, you know, let them, let them think that it's you that's paying for them. See, see, because the way, the way women flirt in the church is, I brought you a plate. Okay, all right. Okay, amen. So they didn't even know I was doing it till the, the week I got launched out. The pastor's wife asked, the pastor was picking up money for me to go. And she said, can I come up? She said, you force us right here. You know, y'all went to the women's convention last year. He paid for it. That's why we need to pick up an offering so he can go to Atlanta and do what God's called him to do. We need to pick up a special offering. If you came in robbing, you don't have to leave robbing. You came in functioning like the priest and the Levite, and we thank God for your giving, but God wants to take it to another level. Not just doing what you're supposed to do, but you're able to be led by the Spirit and do whatever the Spirit wants you to do whenever he wants you to do it. We want you to become a Samaritan. That I gave my tithes, my offering, I gave my pledge. But God, if that ain't enough, just let me know. And even if I don't got it, I'll charge it. He charged it. I ain't got it right now, but just go ahead and take care of it, do it. And I got you. That's what we need this morning. We need Samaritan-minded givers. Amen. I want you to go ahead and stand at your feet this morning. Just worship the Lord right now. Worship God all over this place. Lift your hands up to the Lord. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Just ask the Lord, what will you have me to do? Hallelujah. Maybe there are some men here that want to go, but they can't go. Maybe God wants you to step up. Make sure that they're able to receive from God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Just lift your hands, begin to worship the Lord all over this place.